What's going on, swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. In today's video, I'm sharing with you the swimming equation. I'm gonna break down all the different variables that make up the equation, how to use it to swim faster and smarter than ever before, and at the end of the video, I'll talk through a few different training tips, drills, and a workout that incorporates all these different elements. If you guys are new here, I'm Coach Ferris, and here on the channel, we help you take your swimming to the next level. So if you wanna improve your technique, swim more efficiently, and get faster, you have come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let us know what questions you have down below in the comments. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's break it down. We have ST, that represents our swimming time. And what we're doing, like any equation, we have one element on the side, that's the result. We're gonna solve for our swimming time. And then we have a few different variables that make up that end result. And if we wanna make the end result faster, so we wanna make this number lower, we're gonna be able to tweak a few different variables and we can focus selectively on these different variables to actually swim faster. So let's see what the swimming equation is made up of. So we have ST that represents our swimming time. Now on the one side of this part of the equation, we have our underwater time. This is basically what's happening when you're not even swimming. So when you push off the wall, that's what UT represents. That's the underwater time. Then we have the turn time. So you're not actually swimming in that phase. You're not making any forward progress. So if you're thinking about a 50 in a short course pool or a 100 in a long course pool, while you're doing the turn, regardless of the kind of turn you're doing, that's what TT represents. That is our turn time. We'll come back to S at the end of this equation. Then the next phase of the equation, we have CC and that represents your cycle count. This side of the equation is your actual swimming. We have our CC, our cycle count, multiplied by our stroke rate. And our stroke rate in this equation is defined by seconds per stroke. So that refers to our tempo, how fast we're taking strokes. Now you take that, you multiply it together, you add that to your underwater time or your turn time, and then there's another variable that only applies sometimes and that's your start time. So S represents your start, and that's a combination of your RT, which is your reaction time, from the time the buzzer goes off to when your feet leave the block, and then you have A, which is air time. So, you know, in football we have, in American football at least, you have the hang time of the ball in the air, that's your hang time in the air off of the diving block. Now this only partially applies, it only applies in a race, and it only applies once, so it's, uh, just leave it there. Now let's go ahead and plug in some numbers and see how this works. We're gonna go ahead and substitute some numbers. So, let me slide over here so you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna go ahead and assume we're doing a 100 breaststroke. And in the 100 breaststroke, our cycle count, we're gonna take 18 strokes on the way down and 22 Two strokes on the way back. We're using breaststroke because it's easy to understand, right? Every time your head comes up, you take a breath, that's one cycle count. So this is the number of strokes you take. So over the course of that 100 meters, you're gonna take 40 strokes, 18 on the way down, 22 on the way back. You can plug your own numbers in, just using an example here. Now what is the stroke rate? Remember, our stroke rate is defined in seconds per stroke. For this example, we're gonna say that's 1.2 seconds. So that's our stroke rate, that's our tempo, that's how many strokes, how fast we're taking those 40 strokes. So we're gonna multiply that out and that gives us 48. We're just gonna hold that right there. Now the other part of the equation is what's happening on the breaststroke pullout, right? So you push off the wall on the turn, you have a breaststroke pullout, you're spending a certain amount of time underwater and also off of the start. So let's assume the total underwater time, just to keep things simple, is six seconds. So we're gonna put that right there, six seconds. And then we have our turn time. This is basically in the 100 breaststroke, in a long course pool at least. It's from the time your hands touch the wall to when your feet leave the wall. And that time for an elite swimmer might be something like 0.7 seconds. Uh, if, you're, if you're a really good swimmer, you're gonna be under one second, just run with these numbers. So if we add this part of the equation, we're at 6.7. We're gonna carry the plus. And then a final element here, because this is a race we're talking about, it's the 100 breaststroke, and we're gonna assume the S, so maybe the, the RT was 0.7 seconds, it's a pretty good swimmer, and then they're hanging in the air for maybe a second or so, and they're just kind of floating magically in the air. But we're just gonna keep it simple. We'll say that's 1.5 seconds. We're just gonna carry that down right there, and we're gonna add that together. So if you add together all of this, our end result is going to be 56 point two. So for the whole 100 meter breaststroke, 56.2. And in case you guys are wondering, my hardcore fans, that's how you break the world record in the 100 breaststroke. Adam Petey at the time of this video has the world record, 56 something, and this would slide just underneath that. And if you wanna break the world record in the 100 breast, 
It's that easy. Easier said than done, right? So what did we learn from this swimming equation? It, we learned that you can actually break apart the, the race or the distance into different components, and you can learn from that and actually apply it to where you want to focus your effort to get faster. So for example, let's say we want to make our start faster. If you improve your reaction time, if you somehow make your hang time faster, you get more speed into the water, that is this variable you can play with. Now here's the thing. If you manipulate just that variable, your reaction time is probably not going to get that much faster. So maybe you go from 0.7 to 0.6, right? It's very marginal. So let's, let's throw that out. We're not going to pay attention to that. Instead, let's focus on these other two elements. Let's talk about our underwater time and our turn time. So how do you improve your underwater time? That means you can just move faster underwater. You push off the wall or enter the dive with more momentum, more speed, more power. Your turn is faster. But again, the turn only carries so much because it's 0.7. Are we going to go 0.65? And if you're an elite swimmer, every hundredth of a second matters. If you're a more beginner or intermediate swimmer, I would actually recommend not focusing on this part of it. Uh, we'll come back to different ways you can focus on this part of the equation. Instead, I want you guys to focus on this side of the equation because this is really where the magic happens in training and significant improvement over time. So let's break it down. So we have our cycle count and stroke rate. Now, if you notice, these numbers are larger and they have a bigger impact. So if you break it up, this is 48 seconds out of 56 seconds. So a majority of the time that we're swimming in a race or a distance is in this part of the equation. That's why we want to focus on it. Six seconds out of 56, this is less than 10% of the overall equation, but this is 90%. So let's focus here. Now, how do we get faster at swimming? Let's focus on these two. How to swim faster 101. So you can either decrease your cycle count, so that means you take less strokes. That means you have more efficiency per stroke, and instead of taking 40, you're gonna take 39 or 38. Now here's the thing, if you wanna swim faster, you have to maintain your stroke rate. This is where it gets difficult. It's very difficult to decrease the number of strokes you take and simultaneously maintain your stroke rate. What happens is your stroke rate actually goes uh, up. So it takes you longer to take the same number of strokes because you're trying to stretch it out. So instead of 1.2, it might become 1.25. And if you don't decrease this by enough, then your overall time is actually gonna be slower. But there are things you can do, and we'll talk about at the end of the video, that you can actually mitigate that. Here's another way you can get faster. You can increase your stroke rate. So instead of worrying about your cycle count, you take the same number of strokes, but you do it faster. So instead of touching the 40, we're gonna keep the 40 the same. We're gonna take 18 strokes on the way down, 22 strokes on the way back, but we're gonna do it with a smaller stroke rate. And when I say stroke rate, it's, it's kind of confusing, but remember, stroke rate is seconds per stroke. Sometimes this number is represented the inversion of that. So it might be confusing, but make sure you pay attention to the equation and the numbers and it'll all make sense. So basically we have number one, decrease cycle count. Number two, increase your stroke rate. So just move your arms faster basically. But what happens there, it's kind of the reverse of the cycle count. If you just move your arms faster through the water, you're probably gonna end up taking more strokes. So your cycle count is also gonna go up. So this number goes down, cycle count goes up. You notice how they're very related and you multiply them and that's how you get the end result. And the third way you get faster is you do both of these. So you're able to simultaneously decrease your cycle count and increase your stroke rate. So you go from 40 to 39, and you go from 1.2 to 1.15. And if you do that in this equation, you're gonna end up going 55 seconds, so you're gonna go even faster. The challenge is, this is the hardest version to work on. If you rate them in difficulty, the less hard, <laughs> we're gonna go from hard to harder, is decreased cycle count. And we'll talk about that. You basically take less strokes, focus on max distance per stroke. The next level, which is harder, so they're all hard, so that's hard, this is harder, is to increase your stroke rate. So that means you are able to basically take uh, faster strokes, but maintain the same number of strokes. And the hardest version is to do both of those. And this can be really difficult because of the, the way that these are inversely rela related to each other. One goes up, the other one goes down. One goes down, the other one goes up. So to do both of them is the hardest. Now let's talk about some training tips so you can actually apply that. And we're mostly gonna focus on number one. So we're gonna focus on max distance per stroke. That's what MDPS stands for. So when you're training, when you're swimming, whether it's breaststroke, 
freestyle, butterfly, doesn't matter. You wanna focus on maximizing distance per stroke. That means you're gonna make yourself more efficient and what you're trying to do is train your body to swim with that max distance per stroke. So that way you're able to decrease this number and maintain your stroke rate. So from 40, we're gonna to go to 39, 38, 37, but we're trying to maintain our stroke rate as much as possible. Training tip number two, think about your cycle count and your distance per stroke. So think about this side of the equation. When you fatigue, this is so important. Most people can swim with a really pretty, beautiful, clean stroke for a short period of time when you have lots of energy. The rubber hits the road or the swim cap hits the head, just made that up. When you start to fatigue, that's really when it comes together. Remember, water is 800 times more resistive than air. So of course you feel great when you start, but after you fatigue and your body position starts to sink, that's when you really have to focus on these different elements. You have to focus on maximizing your distance per stroke. Focus on that first. Focus on maintaining your tempo when you start to fatigue. Tip number three is to carry momentum off the wall. So now we're migrating back to this side of the equation. So you wanna carry momentum off the walls, so that way you're really focusing on this underwater time. So maybe your underwater time is still six seconds, however, you went further off the wall. So because you focus on this and you're able to maximize your underwater time, now your cycle count's actually gonna be lower because you still spend six seconds underwater, but you're able to go further distance in the same amount of time. Haha, -ha. that's tricky. And so this number is gonna go down even though this number maintained because you went further on the underwater. And that's something that you can focus on. Another training tip is to do training sets, sets that focus on your swath. So swath is just the swimming version of your swimming efficiency. Kind of like golf, you want a lower number. In swimming, you want a lower number as well. And if you use the My Swim Pro app and you're tracking your workouts or you're following a guided swim with the Apple Watch or a Garmin, with our app, you can actually see your swath by set and over the course of an entire workout and you can measure your progress over time. So it's a really great tool to be able to measure your overall training efficiency because the swath, real quick, is calculated by your stroke count and your time over the course of 25 meters. So you want that number to go down, just like this, you want the number to go down, and that means you're making progress. Now let's go ahead and talk about a swimming workout that ties this all together. When we're doing workouts, we wanna apply these different training tips, and each set is an opportunity to focus on one element of the swimming equation. So let's break it down. I've got a 2000 meter workout and I'm pulling from level three in the My Swim Pro app. I actually found one of the workout of the days that's right there in the My Swim Pro app actually is perfectly suited for the topic of today's video. And I actually wrote it out right here, the skeleton of the workout. We have a warm up, preset, main set, and cool down. I'm gonna follow this workout. Now, just keep in mind, this is a level three workout and the intervals are changing based on my specific speed. So when you see the intervals on screen, don't feel that they're too fast for you or too slow or whatever. They will dynamically change based on how fast you are in the My Swim Pro So let's break it down. We got a 200 freestyle, nice and easy to warm up. I got that on three minutes. Then 450s kick, these are gonna be streamline on back. I have them on the minute. We're gonna really focus on having a good streamline there. So think the underwater component. Then we're gonna finish the warm up with 425s drill, and we're gonna do flow drill, and we even have the equipment shown on the workout so you can see that we're gonna add fins and a snorkel and really focus on kicking a great flow drill. We're gonna move in to the preset, which is two different drills. We're gonna go 450s drill, three strokes and six kicks. Really focus on rotation, maximizing distance per stroke. Then the second round of drills, we're gonna go 450s, and these are gonna be the bow and arrow balance drill. We're gonna use a snorkel, we're gonna use fins, and we're gonna use paddles on this drill. Now the main set, we're gonna go six 100s freestyle. These are gonna be a shorter rest, so that's 110 for me. They might be 130, they might be two minutes for you depending on your speed and the app will dynamically change for you. We're gonna use paddles on those. Then we're gonna do 650s freestyle and we're gonna negative split how many strokes we take. So this is really focusing on decreasing that cycle count. So you count how many strokes you take on the way down and then we take less strokes on the way back. Really focusing on efficiency and maximizing our distance per stroke. We're gonna finish things off with a 200 freestyle that's nice and silent. And what that means is we're gonna listen to the sound that our hand makes when our fingertips slide into the water. So we're using all of our senses and hopefully you've 
finish the workout. That's 2,000 meters. It's about 45 minutes with a technique focus, and you should finish the workout. Look at your Swolf in the MySwim Pro app, and you can see just how efficient you were. Now, if you have an iPhone or an Android, you can download the MySwim Pro app for free, and you can get started with the MySwim Pro Coach, and you can see workouts just like this. I mentioned this is a level three workout, and in the MySwim Pro app, we have five levels, and all the different workouts are tailored based on your specific speed. You can also dynamically change the workout length. So if you don't wanna do 2,000 meters, you wanna do 2,500 meters or 1,500 meters, you can scale up and down the workout using the swim gauge and the slider. And it's absolutely an amazing experience. Now, hopefully you guys got something out of this video and you learned how to use the swimming equation and how to apply it to your own training. If you guys wanna be a part of the largest digital swimming community in the world, make sure you check out our Facebook group. Once again, download the MySwim Pro app. And if you like my perspective and the topics of how I explain the swimming equation, you can check out my book, Swim Like a Pro. I talk about the swimming equation and all sorts of goodies in there as well, how to take your swimming to the next level. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what questions you have down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys at the pool or in that Facebook group. Happy swimming.